Hello. Okay. Mine is a website, and it could be a huge time sink, so be prepared. Um, it's called GeoGuessr, and in Guesser, there's no ER at the end. It's just GeoGuessr. And what happens is it comes up with some Google image somewhere on Earth, and you can pan around just like on a Google map and try and get clues to help you determine where it is in the world. Like you may, on a computer, it's a little bit better because you can zoom in on signs and cheat a little bit and see what language it's written in, or like one a while ago was Universal Studios and it told me specifically where it was. So, uh, so we're gonna guess this one, I'm just gonna randomly guess somewhere in Europe. I'm gonna drop my pin, make my guess, and I would, it's actually in Estonia. So it tells you how many kilometers you were off and it gives you points based on that. And like I said, it can be a huge time sink because it's really fun to kind of figure out where stuff is. I'll tell you Australia and the parts of Africa are very similar, so don't let it trick you, but it's a lot of fun. So it's like critical thinking your kids could be, you know, if you teach geography class, you get some clues from, you know, just like the terrain, because you see mountains, caves, and lakes, and obviously large bodies of water, and then you can how close should I put it to a large body of water? So, Miss Heather, stay up there for a minute. Miss Heather, as Mel, is going to be a 21st century coach next year. She's going to be at the middle school. We don't know which one yet, I don't think. Monday. Monday, you're supposed to find out. Yeah. But I just wanted to introduce you to her because some of you will be seeing her face around your school. So we want to welcome her to our, our cohort. And I was going to say, is Taylor here? Okay, hey Taylor, come up to the front really quick. Hurry, hurry, hurry. We'll introduce you. I was looking for her, but I didn't see her. She was all the way at the back. Is it Taylor Casada? I wanted to make sure I said it correctly. Yeah, Taylor Casada is actually going to be another 21st century um, coach as well, working with iPads and once again, we don't know what, what school she'll be at, but we wanted to introduce you guys to her as well, so you'll be seeing her face. Hey, next. Are you this thing? Yourself, 
but it's, it's a really fabulous tool. It saves you lots and lots of paper and lots, lots of storage space. It is called Record of Reading, and it looks like that R of R is purple. And I know next year at the high school, we are really focusing on a literacy initiative. Um, and middle school as well, so literacy is going to be really hit hard next year, so that might be something you might want to consider. Thank you. We have our next app. There it is. I'm actually not an art teacher, but our art teacher, Chris Dishman, um, told me about this app. It's called Wow Paint. Uh, it is a simple, simpler version of Photoshop. It has different layers. It uh, you can get different shapes, tools. It changes colors. I, I really am enjoying it, as you can see. Uh, they kind of put me up to coming up here. It uh, it's uh, it's a free program. And uh, it, it has little advertisements on it. It's probably how it gets by with it. But it's, it's a lot of fun. It'd be great for our teachers or people who just like to doodle, which I do. Um, I recommend it again. It's called Wow Paint. And it just does look, uh, a lot of things. You can change colors. You can change types of colors. Uh, it has three levels, background, middle ground, foreground. So once you get the backhand on there and you switch to the middle ground, it keeps you from erasing off uh, what you're working on. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Jenny. I was just getting ready to say, see how easy it is to hook up to that. Technology, you gotta love it. Hey, um, uh, the things I've found is when I find limitations to the iPad, I try to go and find the app that fixes that. Uh, one thing we've been exposed to in our early meetings in the eighth grade is QR codes. I don't know how many are familiar with that. Has everybody done some work with QR codes? If not, you'll probably want to ask your 21st century coach about QR codes and how those can help you speed up things like finding sites and identifying things and recording data. But what happens is all the pictures that you take with QR codes go into your photo library and they don't have names. So you just have this massive amount of cards, they look like the little codes on the side of packages. Well, this app that I'm going to show you is called PhotoMe. It allows you to take text and attach it to a picture and make it part of the picture, and the print be big enough so you could read it inside of your photo gallery so you immediately know what it is. So, as soon as whatever they're doing starts working. I think I broke it, so sorry. <laughs>
So if you see that little black and uh, white box there, it's got a little script. That's actually a little character code that uh, our computer scanners can understand what that says. Sometimes it's limited to about 240 characters. So you could type in a little paragraph, scan it, it'll pop up on their screen. But what happens is you get so many of these codes in your uh, photo library, you forget what they are. So you can go to photo name, immediately attach big print like where you see what is this, that's the name I put on that, because I don't know what this is. I think it's something that one of the coaches brought over, but when I'm looking in my photo library, all I see is the black and white, and that takes care of that. And the other thing, Well, the next one's Inkflow. It's free also. It's a cool, fast note-taking device. But what happens is you can actually write on it, and if you want to rearrange it, it's easy as like lassoing something. If you've ever done that with like photo art or something where you just put a border around it, and it immediately allows it to be movable. But if you just double tap, it immediately lets you insert a text or a picture from your photo gallery, and it's the fastest thing. You can do it on the spot. Like, let's say there's a picture from a gallery you want. You double tap the screen, it immediately pops up your photo gallery. You click the picture, and it's automatically there. You can resize it. Um, there's a more expensive version that allows you to like do highlighters and things like that. But for basic note taking and for very beginning note taking, it's the fastest thing to work with I found so far. If you're one of those who don't want to give up the paper and pencil, there's one called uh, Top Notes. It's a great one for like a writing paper, and it has like over 100 pieces of different type of paper, like graph paper from a math teacher, so I am looking for those kind of things like graph paper that's accessible and usable. Not something that's just techie, but actually gonna be something that improves the quality of the work that my students are putting out. And that was a great one. It was on, it was, their pro version went free on apps non free, so that's just a plug for them. Get on there because when those free apps go, there's some that are $14 apps that are free. Uh, I got a chess version where you can, if you have a chess program or a chess club, think outside the box and go find the clubs that you're interested in because there's just so many apps out there that will improve those things. I'm sorry. Thanks, Jody. I think we have one more left. This cafe.
Okay, guys, uh, just one quick mention um, before it's lunchtime. Uh, thanks so much, first of all, for, um, for sharing. Um, it's actually, I think, there's, it's, it's um, a bit more effective when you guys actually present. So we appreciate you coming up and presenting because you guys have used this, especially those from East, right? East kind of piloted the iPads, is that right? Yeah. Um, so you guys have had um, quite a bit of experience with it. Those of you who have experimented since you've gotten your iPads, um, you know what works best for you. So um, please feel free. We'll have, uh, assuming we have enough time um, in the afternoon session, we'll have time for more people to come up and, and show what they, they've discovered. I thought I'd mention just um, about the, the reflection that we've been using. You'll notice that sometimes it, it will freeze up. Um, on Jody's machine, for whatever reason, it, it froze up um, and we couldn't get it. I, I haven't tried it again since I restarted and, and closed off the um, program and restarted it. But, each of those options, um, reflector and uh, air serve, -er, um, have trials that you can that you can use, and you can check it out. Does it work on your uh, machine? Does it work with your iPad? Um, so um, keep that in mind if you want to check it out. Then you